everyone welcome to this tutorial so this tutorial is about how to uh, upload an image how to change the user avatar profile in uh, API architecture so probably this is the most complicated tutorial up to date okay so allow me to show you the the final output okay of what we are trying to achieve here so currently I do not have any members so I'm going to register so John John all right so there's one member so one more time another member Mary Mary all right so now I have two member now right two member right so when I log in let's say I log in Mary Mary all right so now it is login so when I go to profile right so uh, because I only supply the username and credential so telephone number default to zero and the uh, user avatar is defaulted to this image all right so at this point of time uh, the user can actually update her telephone number and also can change the avatar all right so let me just change one nice avatar all right so ch changing to this one so update all right so now mary has been updated okay so if i were to go back to mary again right you can see the phone number is updated and mary's avatar has also been updated so let's lo log out and now we log in using john 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 all right okay so john again uh default phone number and default avatar so let's change the phone number and change the avatar okay update all right okay so now john's avatar is batman and if i were to log out okay and i log in to mary right so we get back Mary's profile so all this seem very trivial but uh, a lot of things are happening behind the scene and that is because we are we are in a web API architecture so we have a web client and we have a web API server so many things uh, many things are happening in order to facil facilitate the uh, sending of information all right okay so let me go to the uh, pictorial form okay to explain right okay so that uh, all, of, all of us will have a clearer picture all right so when when my web client login right okay so when I when my web client login uh, we can say that okay so let's say I I call the endpoint login like with a method post okay it must be public right because uh, the fact that we log in is to obtain the token right so it should not be protected because uh, the meaning of protected means that you must supply some kind of token in order to to say uh, so called to declare who you are right so it must be public for logging in Okay, so the moment I log in, right, my JavaScript send the username and password to the web API, right, in the payload, calling this login endpoint. So what happened is that, uh, of course, the server side is going to check the database whether such a user with the password exists in the database. If it does, then uh, using the JWT module, it is going to generate a token. Basically, it's a series of uh, alpha numeric characters all right so it's going to send this token back to the client okay and this is the same process for be it desktop app or, or mobile app okay or even your postman which postman once again is a type of desktop app so so the web client receive 
the token right so at this point of time when I go to my update form right when I go to my update form let me change this color to black okay and I use JavaScript to call the protected okay so let's say now uh, yeah okay so now to update the member is this endpoint is protected all right, that means it requires a token, a legitimate token. Uh, you can't put this in the public, okay? Because then what will happen is that if anybody gets to know this endpoint and what is the payload it requires, then effectively they can update the the user profile, okay? Which you do not want that to happen, right? So it should be protected. Okay, so now what happened is that the JavaScript is going to send this payload okay calling calling the uh, this endpoint right calling this endpoint so let me make it okay calling this endpoint at the same time uh, the token is going to be inside the payload all right so this this three item is going into the server side okay and after receiving the token and also the payload okay uh, in the JWT okay uh, it has this mechanism to look at the token and uh, given the secret key that previously you used to generate this token it is able to uh, get back the username okay so it, it is able to get back the username Mary okay and and the fact that it can get back the username Mary it means that this is a legitimate token right so once I have the username Mary and this payload, then uh, the server side can safely allow the database to update that particular record, okay? Thereby uh, changing the image and also changing the phone number. Okay, and also uh, in my example, right? Okay, in my example, uh, you can okay or rather okay uh, the client can send the image as binary file that means literally for example uh, picture1.jpg okay so that is a binary file it can actually send the binary file or it can send the uh, what we call the base64 representation of the image so it's a uh, very long series of alpha numeric character all right so in this tutorial i choose to do the letter because uh, it is it, it is easier okay as compared to sending the image as a binary file so there are pro and con whether do we use the binary file or do we use the base 64 all right so for this tutorial i'm choosing the easier route which is to uh, first of all in the client okay in the client I use JavaScript to convert this image to base64 so once it is a string it is then treated like just like any other field like the telephone number or the address okay and then I do a normal post all right okay so uh, that's all for the theory part okay so before we proceed to the hands-on so uh, we will be uh, first of all developing the server side all right so we'll be working on the server side and we will be of course uh, not using the web client at this moment right so we should be using the postman okay so the postman is going to uh, access the protected route okay append the token into the payload access the protected route and to make sure that the updating is successful then and only then uh, we can progress to doing the javascript on the client side all right so uh, going forward uh, that should also be your strategy so whenever you have a particular functionality and that if that functionality involves server side web api then uh, it made a lot of sense uh, to first of all uh, develop the program on the server side and use only the postman to test all right 
okay and when everything is successful then you can go on and uh, work on the web client alright so uh, we are at the member db.js right so basically uh, when the client send the when the client do a login right so the client do a login and then uh, when the login is successful right at the server side the server side return return the token all right so uh, what we want to do now is that when we navigate to the profile page okay we still have the token then at the profile page we are going to uh, call another endpoint right so the endpoint that we want to call okay so, uh, we can call it user right so it's a protected endpoint and we are calling this endpoint and we are furnishing the token okay and because the username is uh, if you have the secret key you can so called derive the username from the token right so basically this endpoint will take the token and derive the username and after getting the username uh, it's going to query the record okay that has that username and return the user information which is the username the telephone number and the user picture back to the client all right so we are we are going to do that so first of all what we want to do is we want to have another function in our member db class okay and uh, we can call it get member Okay, and we are expecting an additional argument called username right and what we want is we want to select this uh, thing okay this thing is a keyword uh, basically this thing means uh, the distinct the record or, or one record okay we want to select the username okay we don't want to return everything okay we don't want to return the password so we want the username comma telephone comma and picture from from the record okay where username so this is the condition where username equals to the variable right so we all know that here uh, because there is a variable here so we need to supply uh, the so called the value for the variable so the value will be this username right so the value will be this username here okay so username all right so we have one more one uh, one more this function here Okay, and now <coughs> we go back to our uh, member controller all right and we can copy this login function here and all right so we have this login member so we are going to Uh, collapse it okay and we are going to paste and we are, we are, we are going to create another function all right so this function uh, we can call it get member okay so get member and uh, basically okay token will be equals to request dot body dot token okay because uh, yeah so we don't need password so what, what are we doing here is basically uh, after getting the token right when I go to the profile page 
the profile page the jquery is going to send the token back all right okay and the server side is going to take this token and derive the user information and pass the user information back to the web client so that's what we are going we are going to do now all right so so uh, the body should contain the token right so that's why the token here and then uh, what we want is we want to get member the the right okay so from from this token okay I think uh, okay I think we should okay let me just delete everything okay it's getting very messy now right so just like that first okay we can copy the code from the login right from the from the yeah okay from from this one okay we can copy the code here okay so let me co copy the code here and uh, let me just take away all this all this stuff here and try to explain to you okay yeah so we are getting the token from the payload right and we have a try and catch clause here so basically this line here right if the token right so this particular api here is able to take the secret okay which is this one and take the token and uh, through some mathematical algorithm right so it's able to uh, so called check whether is this a legitimate token okay if it is then uh, you can continue here if it is not then what will happen is uh, we are going to respond invalid token all right okay so uh, we will just respond back okay we will just respond back this value okay so that you can see what is this value for the time being all right so we'll just so if the token is legitimate then we'll just respond back this value so we need to make some changes to the structure of our member table because previously it doesn't have the picture field right okay so uh, i'm i'm going to use php my admin so uh, I'm going to okay. So maybe I will just drop all the records. Okay, just delete all the records. You don't you don't have to, but I'll just delete all the records, and then go to structure, right? And over here, add one column after telephone. So that is fine. So click OK, and the name of the new field I call it picture, and I'm going to use uh, okay long text, and default value okay i'm going to give it a default value all right so if you come to this if you come to this particular website okay and uh, basically it's a online web application whereby it can uh, convert your image in, into a base 64 representation okay so Alright, so I'm going to drop, I'm going to drop my, the default avatar image into it. Okay, let me try again. Uh, just give me a while. Okay, maybe I, I need to refresh it. Okay, let me try again all right so show code all right yeah so this is the this is the base 64 right okay so I'm so I'm going to use this one so I copy to clipboard so I come back to here and uh, if for any record okay if this view is not uh, if, if no value is is provided for this is for this field then I'm going to uh, paste right okay I, I'm going to paste the default avatar 
okay save all right so basically now I have no no record here okay so uh, let, let me go back to okay so we are ready to test out so now we have this new function get member which given the token uh, it is going to derive what is the username okay and later on from the username we are going to get all the user information so we want to export this function okay so you need to do that okay get member all right then let's go to server.js and let's uh, provision one route okay provision one route so I think we can copy from the login route and here we can put so uh, you can think of think about the route name right so maybe I just call it user post and it's going to call get member okay so so we can try out now okay let me just close everything here okay so first of all I don't have any record so I want to register right so register John John okay looks good uh, let's double check in the PHP my admin browse yeah okay John right so you can see the default default value for this field is over here okay then I want to do I want to do a login John John okay so this is the token all right so once again uh, to refresh your memory when we do a login uh, what happened okay what happened is that over here right uh, so what happened is that I take the username and password I check okay if there is such a record then I use uh if if there's such a record i i look at the password and i compare it with the uh with the password that the user has submitted if is if it's true means that the password matches then this is the part okay this is the jw jwt you assign the username and the secret okay so this secret is just any any uh string that you can put here it can be anything right so you assign it and then you will get a token all right okay so this is the token so let me go back to here again all right so let me just du duplicate this step here and I'm going to call this step uh, get the member right so just getting one member is post and I think I want to save it Okay, get the member I want to save inside member right okay so the endpoint is user I think I got another one here which I want to delete it away okay so this is oh this is login right so I think hmm okay never mind okay so right so this one and I'm going to furnish the token all right furnish the token let's try out all right so I'm getting an error it's, it's normal to to get error so let me troubleshoot so, uh, you must be you must read the error message okay because that is your greatest hint and remember we are dealing dealing with server side so you can go back to your Visual Studio under the terminal here it will also show you the the message okay so I think I know where's the message I think that is because my JSON object is not properly composed right so there's a comma here so let me delete away the comma and send again right so it's returning me returning me John okay so once again if you look at the code here get member right here all right so 
okay this very nice API return me back the username John that's why I'm getting back John all right so now okay maybe I just uh, do another register to show you let's say I have another user Mary Mary okay okay so another user being created and if I browse you can see another user is here and now if I were to log in okay log in using Mary and Mary right so I should get a different token so that's a different token so if I copy this token and I go to this new endpoint and I paste this new token here I should be getting back Mary right okay so everything is working fine Mary so let's continue so remember this function here given a username right we are going to get that particular record of the user alright so we are going to make use of that function now so over here okay I'm going to say member DB dot get member right so I'm going to uh, okay I think I'll just copy and paste okay it's faster because there are a lot of codes here right so I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to copy this all this here and I'm going to paste it here okay so I'm going to change the function to get member and it only require two argument so the first argument is I'm going to pass in decoded okay remember decoded eventually will contain the username right and then I pass in the anonymous function right two argument here so one argument and one big argument here okay all right so when this one is being called it is going to trigger this function and and then uh, the you the John right if the value is John John is going to flow inside here and and then here will be based on John and you return the John record and then you will call this function which is calling back this function okay this function here all right so if everything is successful I will return back the results okay so I think we can try all right so now we can try token so we send all right so uh, so look at the error message okay Un unknown column user right so there's a typo here so this is quite obvious so let's go back to the okay over here I think the where is wrongly formed yeah okay so this is wrongly formed so let's try again send Right, so ah, okay so now it's okay so you can see I'm getting back uh, the result which is Mary and then the default picture in base 64 right okay so what we have done is after we have log after when when we do a login it generate a token it return us back the token we take the token we call another endpoint and then it will return it will return us the user information all right and now what we, what we want to do is that once we have the user information we also have the token we want to do an update so we want to work on the update endpoint Okay, so now we are going to work on the server side update so we have this uh, update function here so this update is going to require uh, four argument so username picture and telephone and this is the normal update statement right so the first first argument uh, the first variable is going to match to the first one right match to the second one and username match to the third one all right okay all right so uh, 
that means to say that if we are going to call this function we need to supply the for argument okay so now we go to our member controller the update member right so basically now if if we want to do an update then we should be supplying the token we should be supplying an image base 64 we should be supplying a telephone number right so so these three things uh, okay these three things must be present okay as the payload so that we can send to the server side okay token telephone number and the picture okay you may ask what about the username so the username can be derived from the token remember so so telephone name right we get from the payload picture we get from the payload token we get from the payload and over here is the same thing we derive the username if this token is is not a proper token then this whole thing will fail and we will be responding back invalid token okay but if the token is a proper one then we can continue right so this one become the username right because this will give us the username so we are supplying back the username we are calling back this function here update member so we are supplying username picture telephone right so username yeah okay uh, username picture telephone okay username picture telephone and then the function okay so we are su supplying that okay so this one is the update member all right so we can and then uh i just remember the route okay we already have the route right uh, that's because we copy from the comments okay so we already have the route and yeah so this is the route so put okay the endpoint is slash members so we can try that now so let's see okay so we have update okay update so this is the route content type application json body uh, okay we don't need you we don't need username right so uh, what we do need is the picture so because the base 64 is very long so we will just put some uh, dummy text for the timing okay for testing okay picture and the token all right token so let's okay but i'm not sure about this token uh, belonging to who so let me do a login one more time mary mary, uh, mary is here so i'm going to copy this token here okay uh i'm going to make another video on the advanced usage of postman okay whereby we don't have to copy the value you know it's very it's, it's very troublesome to copy here and there so we can make use of environment variables to allow the value to be passed by variables so that that will make us more efficient so uh, you can look out for another video on the advanced usage of postman okay so send okay looks good so let's go to so this is on mary so let's go to our php my admin so mary you can see the picture here is the default value when i browse again right so it change you see it changes so let's do one more time let's change the phone to 222 and then the picture to uh, 222 as well okay just just for testing sense all right yeah so it is working so uh, that means to say that uh, if we look at our diagram our server side endpoint is working right we are able to given a token we can return back we can return back the user information and then uh, we can also update the user information provided the token is legitimate okay we haven't tried that so let's say i uh, corrupt the token by adding some some additional character so this one is a uh, this one is a corrupted token now okay so when i send right you can see invalid token okay so only the person who has the proper token can do the update 
Okay, so now that uh, our server side web API is correctly developed and tested using Postman, so it's time to work on the web client, right? So I'm going to have uh, another page, another HTML. So maybe I can copy from this index.html. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to call it edit, right? So edit.html. Okay, and then for for edit, uh, I'm going to just take away all these things. All right. Okay, so try to make it cleaner. Uh, footer I want, message I don't want, I want success, moda I don't want, fill and login. Okay, so something like that. Okay, all this JS, this is needed so that I can bring in the HTML. Okay, and yeah, okay, so I'm going to. Uh, Okay, I'm going to have a redirect dot js first. Okay, I don't have this JavaScript yet. I will be creating soon. All right. So, uh, okay. So this is edit. So, in our top navigation, right? Okay. So we have a we have another link here, and this link when it's been logged in right this link will be linking to edit.html all right so uh let me just let me just log in for you to see so login mary mary okay when i click on this link right so it's going to edit okay so you can see that the login state is not preserved all right so i've i've another video that talk about preserving the login state uh, across multiple html so you can watch that video to have a greater understanding okay but we'll be coding the the javascript again okay so let's go back to edit.html all right okay so uh, right at the beginning okay right at the beginning i'm going to do this Script, okay, and I'm going to uh, create some global variable called picture, comma, telephone, comma, username, username, comma, and token. All right, and then token will be equals to session storage dot get item, and remember our name. Our token, our session storage item name is called token. Yeah, so when the browser starts to render this web page from top to bottom, right? So straight away, it is going to check whether is there such a token already present. Okay, all right. Is there already such a token present? Okay. And now, okay, I'm going to program the redirect.js. So I'm going to, uh, maybe I can, yeah, so I can use this. I can, uh, okay, I can create one file, redirect.js. Redirect.js. Okay, let me copy from here because it's very similar. Okay, redirect.js. So uh, this is a jQuery event listener, right? Uh, it means that when the web page is fully loaded, it's going to call call this function. So I'm going to check, right? If the if the token is not now, right? Uh, then basically it means that. Uh,
Yeah, so if the token is not now, it means that uh, we can infer that the user has already logged in. So we can hide the register menu, the login menu, and we can show the logout menu and the edit menu. Okay, else meaning that token is now. Okay, then what we can do is we can redirect the user. We can redirect the user back to the home page. Alright, so now we are ready to test out. Okay, so the user now is logged in. So if I if I were to go to if I were to go to profile, okay, you can see that the login state is preserved, it's good. So now if I were to log out, okay, and if the user manually go into the hyperlink, uh, okay, edit dodgeHTML. Okay, you can see that it redirect me back. Okay, so let me try to log in. Mary, Mary. Okay, profile. Right, so I stay in the edit page. So it's working. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is that Okay, because the user because the user click on profile so what we want to do now is okay what we want to do now is we want to show the user profile right we want to show the current user telephone number the username and also the user image all right so this is what we, are, we want to do so uh, okay we are going to link to another javascript so we are going to call it load profile. Okay, so let's create the JavaScript load profile.js. Alright, so we can do similar thing. We have this very useful event listener document.ready. Okay, and then uh, var get profile will be equals to new XML HTTP request. Okay, get profile dot open. Okay, what we want is a post, and then the endpoint is. user right okay and get profile dot set request header content type comma application slash json get profile dot on on load equals to function okay and then the payload the payload will be equals to token token okay so remember this token here this variable here this token is this token will be this token okay right at the beginning okay if there is a token all right okay so it's assessing this global variable here token token okay get profile dot send json dot stringify payload okay so I think we can try to console.log console 
okay remember the shortcut console.log clg clg yeah okay console.log get profile dot response text okay so I, I think we can do that okay console.log so let's try now all right so let's come here okay so let's go to profile all right so 405 method not allow okay so something wrong with this url so you can see here so i think that's because ah i forget to put the slash all right so without without the proper protocol uh the browser will treat it as a relative link all right so so now we can try again okay so so uh, we do a logout we do a login Mary Mary login right so the moment we click on profile yeah okay so we are getting back okay we are getting back the information which is good so okay so let's okay this is still in string so we need to convert it to a proper uh, JSON object so var let's create a variable profile will be equals to JSON dot pass okay so uh, you can see that this one this one and this one they are like the opposite pair okay this one is like take a proper JSON object and stringify, change it to a string. This one is take a, a, a JSON string format and then convert it to a proper JSON object. So you can see they are the opposite pair. Okay, and then uh, we can leave the console.log here and then we can say picture will be equals to profile bracket zero okay why, why is it bracket zero uh, it is because we are returning back an array so we want this first item so it's so it's index zero okay so that's why bracket zero dot picture you can copy this one Okay, next one will be telephone and then finally the last one is username. Okay, right. So now since we have all this value, the next step is to create the HTML so that we can uh, on the fly update the picture update the telephone and update the username on the web page so now we want to create the html element so that we can display the user information and i'm going to okay so uh, you can you can actually pause the video and then uh, yeah you can pause the video and copy the copy the HTML right so basically uh, what I have is a uh, input right ID is called username uh, it is disabled because uh, so that the user cannot change the username so input another input text is for telephone so the id is called telephone and then i got another input this is a file this is a file input okay meaning it's a button and the user can actually click on the button to browse the local file system 
there is a function here or there is an event listener that call this function and code all right meaning when the user click on the file button and browse to any file is going to call is javascript is going to look for this function and try to call this function okay there's also a button here the submit button update button and when the button is being clicked it is going to uh, call this function update so currently we don't have these two function yet and i also have another div this image tag here right the id is called target okay so basically the HTML, html will look like this all right okay so now the next thing we want to do is we want to use javascript when we come to this page and since we got all this information we want to use javascript to uh, so called on the fly right append the information here okay so uh, we can have a separate javascript to do that so let's call it update profile okay so we have this javascript update profile uh, i think we can do the loading or information inside load profile i think it is more appropriate so go back to load profile here right and since we have all this value okay next thing we can do is document dot get element by id okay and uh, we have username right username dot value will be equals to username okay so let's take a look right so so username come out already then the next one we can copy and paste the next one will be uh, telephone telephone okay so telephone is here come out then the last one okay last one it will be okay we are targeting we are targeting uh this one okay this one this this image tag so it's target okay we want to target the src so src is very important to an image tag and this will be equals to picture right okay so uh this one is wrong because yeah so so let's let's log out okay i think john is working john the image is correct because we have corrupted mary's image so let's go for john's image okay profile right so we are getting john's image okay which is good okay and now uh we want to okay so if i choose any file right if i choose any file you can see that i'm trying to call this function okay and i'm getting an error okay so we are, we are, we are going to code this function basically this function here eventually is to read the file that the user have chosen and then use javascript to convert it to base64 ready to be sent to the web api at the same time update this image tag here okay so i'm going to back to load profile so okay so let's work on update profile now so let's go to create one javascript let's call it update profile dot js right so we have the update profile.js okay so function and code
Okay, I'm going to copy some codes here and then I'm going to explain to you. Right, so when the user click on the file input, so it's going to trigger this function. Then what will happen is that uh, Okay, what will happen is that okay, it is going to get the file that the user have browsed. Okay, the user have browsed. Okay, let me go back to edit.html. All right. So yeah, okay. So this is the ID my input, right? My input. So it's going to get all the files that the user have browsed. If the user has selected at least one file, then it's going to trigger this if here. Alright, and then uh, I'm going to get the first file. Alright, so the first file that the user have chosen will come inside here. Then I, I use the file reader object. Okay, and then there's a listener. When the file reader, after reading the file uh, completed, it's going to call this function here okay and then I ask the reader to read that file as a uh, read as data URL all right so it's so when when this code is executed when it's finished reading it's going to call this it's going to call this uh, call this function and it's going to run these few lines of code so picture remember picture was the global variable right so picture so I'm going to get the base 64 okay from here okay so this is getting the base 64 and then I'm going to uh, okay I think we can shorten this code okay so I'm going to change the image that now to reflect the picture that the user have chosen right and yeah okay i i think that is all okay so we can test out to see whether does it work so let's choose a file okay okay yeah so it's working now let's choose another file okay so it's working now so uh so what is left is now to have a function right when i click on this you can see I don't have this function yet so now we need to uh, write a function so that we can consume the web API by sending the payload which contain the picture which contain the you uh, contain the picture the token and the telephone number all right so remember here right okay for update we just need to give the picture the telephone number and the token Okay, so we can write another function called update. Okay, and I think we can use the the login. Okay, we can use. Okay, we can copy. Yeah. Okay, we can copy the code from the login. Okay, let's paste here. Okay, let's change the name. All right. So, uh, so the shortcut key is Control Shift L. Right. Select all the occurrences of this word, and then uh, I'm going to call it Update User. Okay. So it is a put. Right. It's a put, and the endpoint is members. Right. And yeah okay and uh if everything if everything is successful i want to show the moda so i'm going to take away i'm going to take away everything okay so everything is successful i will show the moda okay i assume everything is going to be successful okay uh yeah okay so i'm going to send in the token so already we have the token ok 
okay and the picture right we also have the picture so that's the reason why why uh, we made all these variables global variables and the last one telephone okay okay then we uh, stringify okay and then we send and if everything is okay it is going to uh, you know, show the moda okay I think we can try so now uh, this is John okay so let's choose a picture okay I am man all right and then the telephone number 333 update okay so let's go back here let's go to profile again yeah okay it has been changed oh no okay it doesn't so the telephone is not right the te telephone is not changed uh, let me see what is wrong right so uh, we didn't really get the yeah because the telephone we need to get it from the uh, we we need to get the telephone from what the user has key in so it's document dot get element by id telephone dot value value all right okay so i think it should be okay now so let's try again uh, some number okay uh robin all right so update let's go to here and let's go back to profile right so it, it has been changed okay let's log out okay let's try a new user so let's call Ali Ali register all right then uh, login Ali Ali login all right so the link has changed I go to the profile this is the default picture for Ali and this is the default number so Ali can choose to just update the telephone number update okay let's go back to profile again yeah telephone number change so let's change again and this time around we want to change the image also change to uh, Darth Vader all right update Okay, let's say refresh okay I think it's working fine now okay so it's working well okay if I go to edit I cannot get into edit because I've logged out and the token is deleted so I need to log in again so let's go to Mary yeah so Mary image was corrupted so it's okay we can change it so let's give an image to Mary so uh, okay Wonder Woman all right so number is 777 update so let's go back to profile again right so it's updated now all right so this tutorial is quite uh, complicated okay and I hope you can understand Alright. Alright, so thank you for watching everyone.